The science behind reverse dieting. You diet 16, 20 weeks and get yourself ready for the stage. You make your appearance, you're in your best shape. You bring in that package to the stage. You go out that night and you have a great cheat meal, all this hard work, you're gonna enjoy that cheat meal. The worst thing you could ever do after a competition is to gorge yourself with excessive amounts of fluid and excessive amounts of food. You have dialed your body in for the 16 or 20 week prep. Your body is like a sponge. You've squeezed everything out of it. And now this one meal that you're gonna have post contest could really get you sick. You know, oh, I've, I've heard guys and I might have done this myself once or twice, but I went and had a few slices of pizza, a cheeseburger, a milkshake, a french fries, and I ate all this and all this, and oh my God, my stomach's killing me. Of course your stomach's gonna fucking kill you. Look what you just put into your body that you kept out of your body all those weeks of contest prep. Your body can't handle that. My advice after a competition, Go have a nice meal. Slowly put your fluids back in you, especially if you're using diuretics. Diuretics just don't stop working when you stop taking them. They stay with you a few days. So slowly bring your fluid levels back. Now that the competition's over, you had your cheat meal, the handcuffs are off. You got free reign to go eat whatever you want. Everything you thought you were deprived of after, you know, during this contest prep. All the drive throughs are open now. All, everything's got buy one, get one free. You know, buy one burger, get one burger free. Dunkin' Donuts, buy two, get four free. You haven't missed out on anything. That shit still tastes the same. You just haven't had it in so long. You just can't go back to eating that stuff and maintain the look that you achieved when you were on stage. You always want to look like you're kind of sort of stage ready. And I recommend to my clients that compete, stay within 15 pounds of your contest weight. And the way you do that is you stay on your contest diet. The only difference is you're not dialing yourself in for a show. You're doing just the opposite. You want to add more size. You, now you're in your off season. You want to add more size. So all you have to do is increase the amount of diet food that you are eating on a daily basis. And everybody's diet's different. You should know what food works for you. Increase your carbs a little bit each meal. Increase your proteins. Increase your fat. It's not that difficult. It's not rocket science. It's more common sense. Once a week, go have a good cheat meal. Whatever you fancy, it doesn't matter. You want shit meal like a McDonald's? Go have it. You want a sandwich? Go have it. But stay in tune with what you've been eating for the competition. Just increase the volume. Your body is going to absorb that food and it's going to fill you out. And you're always going to look the part within 15 pounds. It's better to look 15 pounds over competition weight than 30 pounds and not have a single line of definition. Because those 30 pounds are going to be fucking fat. And where you store it depends on your genetics. It could be in the waist, it could be in your ass, it could be wherever. Everyone's genetics are different. Stay in tune with your contest diet. Increase your food intake. Have your cheat meal. You're a bodybuilder. You're not somebody who wants to gain excessive weight. That's why it's called reverse dieting. All you're doing is reversing what you did for the competition diet, for the prep you just went through. You're not depriving yourself. You're not cutting your caloric intake down to get that chiseled look. You're increasing your calories. You're increasing your proteins, your fats, your complex carbs. That's all it is. Try to keep it simple and try not to overthink this process. If you think you're going to put 30 pounds on and you're going to gain a lot of muscle, you are sadly mistaken. I'd rather see my guys put 10 pounds of solid weight on after a show over a six, seven, eight month period, and that's a regimented eating style, then gain 30 pounds and come to me fat in the ass, no abs. Do you realize how hard you're gonna have to diet down to only see a little bit of muscle gain? But if you stay within that 10 or 15 pound range, do you realize the muscle gains that you're gonna benefit from? You can put on those good five or six pounds of muscle in a year, not the 30 pounds of fat because you went crazy at all the fucking drive throughs Stay true to your diet. You can have your cheat meal. You can enjoy it. Don't go crazy. Every meal is not Thanksgiving. With that being said, I have newly released training courses in my Buy Me A Coffee site. The link is in the description. Chest and shoulders, back and biceps, legs, shoulders, triceps, and calves. I talk about contest preparation. I also talk about the dramatic weight loss, reversing type 2 diabetes, where I go in depth into the keto diet and how great the keto diet is for bodybuilding. 
These courses are available in my Buy Me A Coffee. The link is in the description. I highly recommend this, and if you join my Buy Me A Coffee site on a monthly membership, you'll get 25% off of the training courses. And they're big files. I put a lot of time putting these files together. It's everything that Bob Gruskin taught me. And I was with the man since I was 17 years old. I learned everything from him, and I'm sharing that with you guys at a very, very reasonable, reasonable cost. Trainers are getting $300 a month. You're not going to pay that for these courses. And 90% of them don't even know what the fuck they're talking about. They oversell themselves. I ain't overselling myself. I had the best coach in the world. He trained nothing but champions, and I was one of them back in the 80s. So with that being said, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, share my content, and I'll see you guys back at the next episode of Championship Muscle. Peace out.